Hello, my name is John Boone, and uh, I'm a medical physicist at UC Davis, and this lecture is the AAPM Report TG204 for Size-Specific Dose Estimate. I was uh, co-chair of this um, report committee, and, and therefore it's uh, relatively close to my uh, heart. Um, I thought I'd start with a uh, description of the problem associated with the conventional CTDDI-based uh, metrics. We can talk about dose as a function of patient size, and then uh, some uh, aspects about determining patient size, both manually and automatically, and then get into the size-specific dose estimation itself with a quick summary. So this slide three shows the standard apparatus used for measuring CTDI sub-100, which leads to the computation of CTDI vol, which is displayed on the uh, scanner console. And this is where you use a 100 millimeter pencil chamber inserted either in the center hole or in the peripheral hole and uh, do an axial CT scan and, and make the, the measurements. And then a, a one third, two third weighting of these uh, values then gives CTDIW uh, and essentially CTDI vol for a pitch of one as well. So uh, one of the limitations of uh, that large 32-centimeter diameter phantom is that it's quite large, much larger than most patients. And you can see on slide four here that the relative dose as a function of diameter increases for smaller diameter uh, patients. And so in general, the CTDI val value underestimates the dose to a given patient. This is another slide which illustrates this, slide five where we have CTDI vol that was determined at a given set of technique factors like KV, time, rotation, uh, uh, MA, and, and the like. Um, and you can see that the relative dose as a function of effective diameter uh, increases as the um, person gets smaller, or in the case of this slide, as the uh, patient gets younger. So let's look at dose as a function of patient size, and, and this uh, effort uh, was really uh, sort of a meta-analysis of uh, the data produced independently by four independent research groups, as you see on slide seven, the, the um, map of the U.S. here. These groups included uh, Tom Toth and Keith Strauss uh, from the Boston area, where they used three uh, individual CTDI-like phantoms uh, for their measurements, and they did very comprehensive measurements. Uh, this is measured data. Cynthia McCullough and her group at the Mayo Clinic uh, used a series of phantoms, as you see here in slide nine, and made physical measurements as well across a number of different CT scanner platforms. Uh, Mike McNick-Gray at UCLA did Monte Carlo uh, evaluation of voxelized patient phantoms. The voxelized phantoms were actually produced from CT scans, as you see in slide 10 here. And uh, my own group at UC Davis, uh, my uh, uh, former colleague Hong Zhao and I uh, wrote this paper, slide 11, um, using just simple phantoms, and this was a Monte Carlo exercise as well. So the whole idea uh, behind uh, this pr process is to use these data and the known CTDI vol and normalize these curves to CTDI vol primarily for the 32 centimeter diameter phantom, but also for the 16 centimeter uh, PMMA phantom as well. And when we do that normalization, um, we choose this normalization point in this example for the 32 centimeter diameter phantom. It, it tends to collapse all these curves and gives us a very consistent story across KV and scanner types and, and uh, the like. And ultimately it leads to a patient size specific correction factor which is the primary uh, topic for um, this TG uh, task group 204. The correction factor is then multiplied by the CTDI value that's reported by the scanner to estimate the patient's um, mean uh, dose in milligray. So these are the data when combined together from the various groups at all at 120 kV, and this is for the 32 centimeter diameter phantom. You can see that it's not a perfect fit, but you wouldn't expect that, uh, but it's a pretty darn good fit, uh, fit. And you can see the vertical red dashed line. That's about 32 centimeters, and you would expect that to go uh, 
to have a conversion factor of unity. It's a little bit higher than that because there is implied in this correction uh, the conversion from air kerma, which is what CTDI vol is measured in, to tissue dose um, in milligray. And so that's uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, the line, the best fit line, is a little bit elevated above unity at 32 centimeters in diameter. So this is the bottom line uh, and essentially the data uh, for the 32 centimeter uh, work. This is the equivalent data if, if your CT scanner uses a 16 centimeter diameter PMMA phantom. You can see here for 16 centimeters the, the curve goes through approximately uh, unity at, at that value. So these two curves uh, are well fit by an exponential function that you see here for both the 32 and the 16 centimeter diameter phantoms. Um, and this, because it's analytic, it makes it easy for uh, software vendors to code this in once you know what the effective diameter is or the water equivalent uh, diameter that I'll talk about. So in terms of determining patient size, one could do this manually, um, and let me describe that. And so. On the right side of slide 19 here, you see a CT scan, and it has a certain area. Um, and we pretend that the effective diameter uh, of uh, this is essentially a circle with the equivalent area. Other parameters that we can use are the AP dimension as well as the lateral dimension, and we also can use the sum of these two values, um, as you'll see. So. This slide 20 shows the effective diameter as a function of AP dimension, and you can see a little curvature in this um, plot. And this was from patient data acquired from three different sources, as you see in the uh, caption there. And this is effective diameter, diameter as a function of lateral dimension, and you can see the curvature is actually in the other direction from these three uh, sources. Um, these are the same curves plotted on the same plot, and you can see the concavity and convexity of the individual curves for the lateral and uh, PA dimensions. And so the whole idea here is uh, if you have a scout view or a localizer view, you can um, use the tools on the CT scanner or on your PAC system to make either the lateral dimension or PA dimension measurement. And uh, from that, you can then uh, compare it, uh, come up with an effective diameter. So if you uh, sum the AP and lateral dimensions, you see this curve, um, which shows the effective diameter as a function of the sum of these two dimensions. And it becomes fundamentally quite linear, taking the, the inverse bow out of uh, both of the previous um, uh, curves. And then um, let's talk about determining patient size in a more automated uh, uh, process. And this is slide 25 now. So we have the CT image in the upper left. And you can see if we apply a threshold into that, that is, every, we make everything white above a threshold of minus 800 Hounsfield unit and everything black below that value. What we've effectively done is eliminated the air. The air shows up as black on uh, this phantom, uh, on the patient image, I mean, on the right. And uh, um, all the tissues in the patient show up as, as white. Um, we can then loop over the image, and uh, when uh, the Hansfield uh, unit is greater than the threshold value, as you see in this sort of script code here, we sum up the Hansfield units um, as seen, and we also count the number of white pixels in effect. Turns out that M is the, uh, the ratio of the sum over the count, and the M will essentially be the effective density of, uh, of the tissues. If, the, if all the white on the upper right uh, image were water, um, M would equal 1, and if it was greater than that, if it was tissue, which is a typical HU around 200, it would be you know, 1.2 or so. From this, we can calculate the water equivalent diameter, d sub w, as you see on the equation below. I'm not going to focus on, on the math here, um, uh, just to show you that it's a relatively easy calculation to perform automatically um, on, a, on a computer. The, the, the biggest issue is having the patient so that the entire tissue, the entire patient, is within the field of view, uh, and that is a, a challenge in most clinical scenarios, which tend uh, to cut, uh, cut parts of the patient off, and so that needs to be a, 
an issue. One could reconstruct all the images with a large 500 millimeter display field of view, and that would solve that issue uh, in, in most patients here. So this is a, uh, a, a depiction of the water equivalent diameter as a function of the actual PMMA di diameter. And realize that PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate, has a density of 1.19, so it should be a density of about 1.2, and that's why the blue measured data uh, is ex a little bit above the uh, line of identity there, the, the uh, d dashed line. So all makes sense, um, at least in a phantom. So the size-specific dose estimation, we've sort of gone through um, how we came up with the conversion factors and how we can measure the size of the patient. But here are a couple of uh, clinical examples. So here's an example of a pediatric patient with a, uh, a narrow uh, uh, waist or, um, uh, of 14 centimeters. And we measure this from the CT radiograph. And we could do this prior to the actual CT scan. So um, we can look and, and see that uh, the closest to 14.7 centimeters uh, is 15 centimeters. And we can see from um, the curve on slide 28 here is the correction factor is 2.13. Um, And uh, this slide shows that uh, the CTDI value is actually shown on the, um, um, on the console. And so the conversion factor times the CTDI value can lead to the um, a computation of the average, glandular, average dose to the patient uh, from that scan prior to the actual CT scan being performed. So slide 30 shows a different scenario where we've already done the CT scan now, and we can see that in this case we can measure both the uh, horizontal and vertical dimensions of the patient, and we can sum those. So we have 123 millimeters and 99 uh, millimeters, so um, that sums to about uh, 22 centimeters in, in uh, um, over the sum of these two parameters. Uh, we can also see, because this CT scan has been reported already, and the CTDI of all based upon the 32 centimeter diameter phantom uh, was reported as 5.4 milligray. Well, um, we can go to the lookup table that's provided in TG204, and we can see for the 22 centimeter, the sum of these two, um, the lateral dimensions and the AP dimension, uh, we can see that the correction factor is 2.5. So we multiply the 5.4 milligray, which is reported by 2.5, to come up with an SSDE of 13.5 milligray. So this is a good example of how pediatric patients really receive a higher dose than what is reported by ctdi vol, a change from 5.4 all the way to 13.5, which is a better estimate of the dose of this uh, small uh, a child. So in summary, um, on slide 33, we see a number of, six, of CTDI conversion factors for the 16 centimeter phantom. We made this in yellow, so it would be obvious that you're on the, set, on the right page um, uh, when you're looking up the conversion factors. And the more common uses for, the, uh, for body imaging is the 32 centimeter diameter conversion factors, and we made that with a green background. Um, so as to stand out uh, for users of, of this report. Um, so uh, in the report, you can see these uh, tables shown on uh, slide 34 that uh, uh, cover uh, the sum of lateral and AP dimensions, just the lateral in table 1B, just the AP in table 1C, and then the effective diameter directly in, in a, a table uh, 1D. And so this is a, a picture from the front page of AAPM report number 204. And you can see the website here on slide 35. And this website is available to all. It um, does not require a password to access the report as a PDF file. And so the features of uh, what's described for calculating the size-specific dose estimate in AAPM report 204 are that uh, conversion factors are provided as a function of patient size. The whole process is normalized to the CTDI of all value that's uh, reported on the console or provided in the PACS report after the scan. 
The size parameters that one can use to uh, estimate the conversion factors include the AP dimension, the lateral dimension, the sum of these dimensions, and the water equivalent diameter of the patient. Um, we have a method for the automatic determination of water equivalent diameter. And uh, the report also uh, discusses re um, language that would be appropriate for pediatric radiologists and others to report. And that language was developed by the radiologists who were collabor collaborators uh, on this report. Um, and so I should also mention in closing on slide 37 that this was ostensibly an AAPM task group 204, but it was really sponsored uh, in addition by in the Image Gently campaign as well as the International Commission on Radiation Units and Measurements, the ICRU. Thank you.